Shopify helped businesses break sales records over the holidays with the world's best converting checkout. Let's hear that one more time. The world's best converting checkout. Shopify's legendary checkout makes it easier for customers to shop on your website, across social media, and everywhere in between. Now that's music to your ears. Any way you spin it, you can be a smash hit with Shopify. Start your dollar a month trial today at shopify.com slash records. I would sing this, but you really don't want me to. Trust me. Every step you take, every move you make, every single day, every word you say, someone's watching you. The idea that someone somewhere knows exactly where you are located at any given moment, well, it used to give people the creeps. But now it's less of a big deal. Most of us have accepted the fact that if we own a smartphone, we're being tracked, maybe we're being watched. But let me ask you this. Have you ever wondered exactly who is tracking you and how much they can actually see? I'm America's digital pro, Kim Commando, and welcome to Commando On Demand, a podcast that provides in-depth insight on the ever-changing technology landscape and the impact it has on our lives. We're going to hear from tech industry experts, movers, and shakers. And in this podcast, we're going to find out who's spying on us and how to hide from them, if that's at all possible. You see, right now, your phone is a magnifying glass. And there are people paying big bucks for an up-close and personal view of you. And you really need to know how all of this works so that you can transform your phone from, say, that magnifying glass into a data privacy shield. But until then, you're just a sitting duck. We all are. I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm trying to inform you because knowledge is power. And you're going to have so much power at the end of this podcast. But first, let's say a huge thank you to one of our sponsors in this podcast that makes this possible. Well, welcome back. You remember the old fairy tale. The big bad wolf followed Red Riding Hood long before she knew he was there. Well, in the same way, location tracking, it's not a new technology. There were many others. Before GPS came onto the general market, we all had it. The only method really used to track a cell phone was triangulation. That was kind of like figuring out where the phone was located by creating a triangle of the cell phone towers around it. And by looking at that triangle, you could pretty much figure out where the phone was located. Nowadays, your GPS is technology that provides pretty much exact location, but it comes with a cost. If you use GPS, you're making a trade-off. Whether you know it or not, you're giving away a lot of your personal information. But let's talk a little bit about GPS. GPS stands for Global Positioning Systems. This is the satellite navigation system that we use here in the United States. Here's how it works. 27 satellites are busy revolving around planet Earth. They send back three-dimensional locational data to special receivers. 24 of them are in use, and three are for backup. You see, even GPSs need backups. The receivers figure out the location and the distance of the satellite by analyzing the time it takes to receive the signal. Using the information from several satellites at once, GPS can be super accurate about location. It can be within 50 feet or so, or maybe even closer. But keep this in mind. These satellite critters, they're way up there, 12,000 miles away, traveling thousands of miles per hour, and they're powered by the sun. So if your GPS lady happens to be off by, say, 50 feet, give her a break. I mean, she's getting your information from far, far away. And that's why even though you may be using a GPS, you've heard the stories, people driving off cliffs, going into wrong way intersections. You always need to use your own common sense when relying on a GPS. All right, back to the satellites. At first, satellites were only meant for military use, applications. They were maintained by the United States Department of Defense. In the 1980s, the public got a hold of it, and now GPS is pretty much available to anyone who wants to pay for it 24-7. This is actually kind of cool. We get all that satellite technology for free. We don't have to pay to use a GPS. There was a time when you'd actually have to have a monthly fee, by the way. There are no setup fees, no contracts. Everyone can see everything anytime. We all share it, which means if you put on your thinking cap, a terrorist has as much right to it as a scientist. But for most of us regular at home folks, it's a great way to learn about the world around us. 
as a society, we rely heavily, and I mean heavily, on GPS. If it goes kaput, its readings would be way off. Planes, trains, and automobiles would be the first to feel the effects. While a worldwide GPS failure isn't likely to happen, it's now possible for a hacker to spoof a phony GPS signal that nearby receivers might mistake for the real thing. And it's been done before. The United States Department of Homeland Security says that critical services like water control, agriculture, flood control, medical care, emergency services, and information technology are particularly vulnerable to this kind of sabotage because most of them actually rely on GPS to function. All right, now that you know all the basics, you can appreciate how powerful the GPS systems are. All that power, imagine it, just right in the palm of your hand. And speaking of world power, it's no secret that Google tracks your location. Not always in the foreground, but in the background too. There are other companies watching via Wi-Fi. Skyhook is the name of a company that has come up with a competitive navigation system that gave Google's location software a run for its money. Skyhook was on the move. They had deals inked with Samsung and Motorola. One Google manager even went as far to say that Skyhook's accuracy is better. Well, just as a lawsuit was brewing by Skyhook against Google. Now, according to the lawsuit, someone from Google on high, and that's the exact phrase, put the screws to Samsung and Motorola, causing them to cut ties with Skyhook and threatened to make it impossible for them to ship their phones on time. Well, Google wound up paying $90 million in a patent infringement claim, which is kind of chump change to them. And under pressure from the government, Apple developed a technology called, you ready for it? Hybridized emergency location. All right, those of us in the tech industry know we never say things like that, so we shorten it up to an acronym. It's H-E-L-O. They wanted to use this to find you in an emergency. So when you call 911, Hilo figures out where you are located using cell towers and also on-device data from your GPS and Wi-Fi access points. The whole idea is that your phone would take all this data and say, okay, this is where Joe is. And of course, we have weather and barometric pressure to find out where you're standing. And what about if your location is turned off? Well, that doesn't affect Hilo, no siri, Bob. Apple's privacy policy covers all that. I'm not saying that you want to, but maybe someday when you've got nothing to do, you actually might want to read it. This particular Wi-Fi based technology is actually pretty amazing. Like most location services, Hilo uses already gathered Wi-Fi BSS IDs to figure it all out. You see, every Wi-Fi access point has its own ID and they can be used to find you. And who has been collecting the data for years? Not Google necessarily, but our stealthy friends, Skyhook. Saving lives is one huge reason this technology makes sense. But here's another way it makes sense. And I mean like sense as in C-E-N-T-S, as in money. In a markets and markets report, location analytics are predicted to grow, get this, to $16.3 billion by 2021. That's a lot of ducats. So when you're talking about measuring foot traffic, store traffic, ad campaigns, personalized marketing, customer habit analysis, the list goes on. You can see location data is a valuable commodity. And through it, first responders are able to get the location of an emergency about seven minutes faster, which is great. According to the director of the Harvard Data Science Initiative, Francesca Dominica. She says that that translates into saving about 10,000 more lives per year. Of course, that's another valuable commodity. It's not easy to tell when apps and tech companies and your pocket gadgets are following you all around. Just like the big bad wolf wanted the cake and grandma and everything else, tech companies want your location data and more if they can get it. Location data is like a trail of cookie crumbs that leads directly to your wallet. Because where you are located indicates, come on, put on your thinking cap, you know the answer. Where you are located indicates what you'd like to buy, of course. And as a result, apps and mobile operating systems are just dying to get a hold of it. But if you don't want to give it away, you'll have to make a trade-off. In other words, are you willing to read a map rather than use a GPS? Do you even own a map? 
I mean, come on. I knew that one would stump you. I bet you even forgot all the skills you needed to fold a map. I tried to do one recently. I failed miserably. And who wants to fuss with these huge pieces of paper and all that stuff? So the bottom line, here's the deal. If you want privacy, you're going to have to give up convenience. All right. Are you ready to give up convenience for privacy? Then grab your cell phone and let's make the switch. Stay right where you are because after this quick message from one of our podcast sponsors, I'm going to tell you about location tracking and what you can do to maybe tone it down just a little bit on your smart device. So stay right where you are. All right, you're back for more. I'm happy about that. If you've got location tracking enabled on your device, then you're basically giving Google and Apple carte blanche to your location and all your activities. It's just part of the deal. If you don't want your smartphone to report your position, an app or organization, it's time to disable the master location. Now, disabling the master location basically stops your phone from letting cell towers, Wi-Fi networks, and satellites know where you're located. All right, here's how to do it. If you got an Android, head over to Settings. Go into Security, Location, Location once again, then turn the Use Location switch to off. Makes a lot of sense. iPhone users, you're going to open your Settings, then choose Privacy and Location Services. Find the Location Services and switch that bad boy off. Now you are what we in the tech world call dark. When you're dark, you won't be able to find where you are located on an online map or locate the nearest gas station or Starbucks or find your phone if you lose it. Google won't be able to use your presence to determine how busy a freeway is or place you on their Wi-Fi maps. But do you still exist? Do you think, are you still visible? In an emergency, you sure are. When you dial 911 in the United States and you're on a network where emergency location sharing is enabled, And most of us are, by the way. First responders will still be able to find you without a problem. Now let's talk about apps. You can actually leave your master location on and still block apps from knowing where your phone is. Let's start with Android once again. Head over to settings, that's security and location, location. And inside there, you're gonna have something that says app level permissions. You'll see a list of all the apps on your phone and it takes time, but just go down the list, choose which apps you wanna hide from. Apple users, you get a more customized choice. Of course, anything on your iOS happens under settings and then privacy, location services. That's where you can see your apps. From there, you can choose to enable location a few different ways. Say only when using the app, always or never. If you do choose only while using the app, you'll only share location when the app is running. That's actually pretty handy. All right, so now you know something, how to pick and choose which apps get to see you and which ones don't. But with location access disabled in Android-based apps, be prepared to live without those apps. Many of them won't even function unless they have access to your location. Again, it's that trade-off. What do apps do with your location data? That's always a question I get on my show. Well, it depends on the app. Every app is different. A fitness app can be particularly most intrusive because it literally counts every single step you take, every calories you eat if you want, every brand of food that you buy, where you go to work out. And it may be working in the background even if you're not working out and not using it. So if you want maximum invisibility, the key is to disable that master location. Because even with your location switched to off on all your apps, Well, there's Apple and Google. They can gather location data about you. And don't forget, the mighty Facebook probably can too. So how can they do this? Well, they may own the actual operating system or have a big chunk of it. According to a recent AP report, Google's a little bit more motivated to get a hold of your data. But they own it. You own the phone. They own the operating system that you use. So in turn, they own all the data they can collect ethically through that operating system. Wow, isn't that something? Bet you didn't think about that when you bought the Android phone. But it's not like they didn't warn you. Do you remember when you read their privacy policy over a cup of coffee one day? Yes, you were so excited. You sat down, you had that coffee and said, do you agree to your terms? And you're like, I don't agree until I read every single paragraph. All right, of course you didn't read it. It's very deep in there. It's in Apples too, and I have a confession. 
I tried to read it once. I really did. I had all good intentions, but after like a page, I said, just forget it. And here's the scary thing. Researchers at Princeton University just figured out how to track a smartphone's location, even with all the location services and the GPS disabled. Yes, I said disabled. Here's what they did. The research team created a security exploit by combining information from the phone and non-phone sources to track down a device. So even with location services, GPS, and Wi-Fi turned off, the pin me technique demonstrated that it is indeed possible to track a location. All right, this is super interesting. They use seemingly unrelated data like the time zone of the phone, reading from its sensors like air pressure, mixed with public information from maps. And maybe this sounds all familiar. Think about Fitbit, all right? Just for a moment, all the data it reads just from your wrist. The pin me method is virtually undetectable because the sources used in the analysis are so minute, they don't require user permission. In February 2018, they concluded, and I'm gonna quote them, despite a user's best efforts, their device's location, and most likely their location, can be tracked. All right, let me just say that again. Despite a user's best interests, all right, in other words, anything that you've done, your device's location, which means most likely your location, because you're not going anywhere without your phone or your tablet, can be tracked. So if you're trying to conceal your location, whether for personal or professional reasons, you could really run into trouble in the near future. It all comes down to a new thing that's called sensor data. One researcher said that if there was a way to switch off the sensors, people may be able to avoid being secretly tracked with the PinMe method. Now, PinMe has an upside though. Autonomous car manufacturers, they are considering using it as a security device. And with GPS becoming more and more hackable, PinMe could serve as, I guess, a viable alternative. Okay, so we've gone through a lot of GPS stuff. Let's talk about the tech, the technology behind it. And for this, I want you to meet Richard Eilert, a freelance full stack developer. Richard's the man. He's received rave reviews from international clients, including Fortune 100 companies like Procter & Gamble. Now, among other technology, he's an expert in GPS geolocation and something that's called geofencing. These are communication technologies that use a person's physical location. Geofencing is actually pretty amazing. It deploys a message when a person crosses a predefined virtual perimeter. So, Richard, hi. Thanks for taking some time to be on this podcast, because on Commando On Demand, we like to talk to the industry movers and shakers, and you, my man, you're one of them. Thank you for having me. Nice to be here. All right, I've already covered the basics in this podcast, but in a nutshell, how does location tracking find us? A GPS tracking system uses the Global Navigation Satellite System, which is a GNSS network. This network incorporates a range of satellites that use microwave signals, which are transmitted to GPS devices to give information on location, vehicle speed, time, and direction. So a GPS tracking system can potentially give both real-time and historic navigation data on any kind of a journey. So we could say this is not just a stationary location. GPS receivers not only track the exact location, but can also compute velocity and time. So the positions can even be computed in three-dimensional views with the help of four GPS satellite signals. Right, that's pretty amazing. And I did cover some of that earlier. Are there any shortcomings or ways that it can be improved? Yes. For all the uh, awesome applications from portable navigation devices to self-driving cars to cruise missile targeting, the American Global Positioning System and its Russian cohort with its gloss mask have two fundamental flaws. They don't work indoors and they only operate in two dimensions. Oh, I get that. Makes sense. 
fair enough, we're talking about an extremely weak signal that has traveled like 12,600 miles after all, and it's passing through concrete and other solid obstacles, and it's hard enough for a strong short range cellular signal. So you can't seriously expect a 50 watt signal traveling 12,000 miles to do the same. Detecting a GPS signal on Earth is compatible with detecting the light from a 25 watt bulb from 10,000 miles away. All right, Richard, that answer certainly does put things into perspective. The situation is a little more complex when it comes to detecting a change in altitude. GPS and cross maps can measure altitude, but generally the data is inaccurate and too low resolution for everyday use. And even with these limitations, uh, those space-based satellite navigation systems have changed almost every aspect of society, from hardware hacking to farming to, you know, finding a girlfriend. All right, wait a minute. Farming, hacking, even finding a girlfriend? Sounds like location tracking is becoming more and more involved in every aspect of our daily lives. What would be cool would be if we had a system that worked indoor. And what we have is a system called IPS, an indoor positioning system. And we're nearly there with that right now, IPS. Recently, Google Maps for Android began introducing floor plans of shopping malls and other large commercial areas. And Nokia 2 is working on an indoor positioning system, but using actual 3D models rather than 2D floor plans. And unlike GPS and Gloss Maps, there isn't a standard way of building an indoor positioning system. Google's approach tracks you via Wi-Fi. It knows where the Wi-Fi hotspots are in a given building, and through signal strength triangulation, it can roughly work out where you are. I'm fascinated with this technology. What's involved with the indoor positioning system? What will it be compatible with? How will it work? The Broadcom chip supports IPS through Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and even near-field clients. More importantly, though, the chip also ties in with other sensors such as the phone's gyroscope, magnetometer, accelerometer, altimeter, and it acts like a glorified uh, pedometer. This Broadcom chip could almost track your movements without wireless network triangulation. It simply has to take note of your entry point via GPS and then count your steps by the accelerometer, direction through the gyroscope, and altitude to the altimeter. So, in short, indoor positioning systems are coming first to build up in heavily touristed areas probably within the next year or so, and then as smartphone saturation reaches 100% everywhere else. All right, I get it, through the Broadcom chip. Okay, so IPS isn't somewhere on the horizon. It's essentially here. So in order to get that data out, you're going to need a way to distribute it. So I imagine 5G is going to be the way to supercharge it all. Indoor positioning, that, that will integrate with the 5G technology as far as the signal levels being higher and the connectivity being better and just general accuracy being better. Yes. If we want complete privacy, I don't know, do we have to just stop carrying a cell phone? The answer to that question, I think, depends on your own personal preferences. Um, I mean, for those of us whose birthday allows us to do so, we can remember back to when there were no cell phones at all. So the ability to go underground was a bit easier, I guess, if you wanted to go completely private and remove yourself from society for whatever reason. Uh, However, today, with cell phones being such a predominant link to everything in our lives and the apps and web activity that we have through our cell phones, there's definitely a lot of tracking that goes on. So if we want to have complete privacy, do we stop using our cell phones? You know, we've all seen in the movie where the guy breaks the phone in half or takes the battery out because they don't want to be tracked for whatever reason. So I guess depending on the level of privacy that you need, in short, I guess the answer to the question is yes, turning off a cell phone would be a good start to go completely private. Richard, explain to us what did you mean by going underground? Is there a way to tunnel down into a place where location trackers say cannot reach us? Well, I mean, as far as technology goes, you know, there's like a Faraday cage, which which can be built, which is designed to completely block out any incoming signals. But just short of that, there's not really any way to stop the tracking that goes on with your phone. Because, I mean, if your phone is on, it's performing functions that are being tracked, especially, you know, with people saying yes, and, you know, when you're installing an app and you're just flipping through it. Yes, 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 okay, yep, just start the app, come on, yep, I agree, okay, yep. You know, if you're not reading through those things carefully and really paying attention to what you're agreeing to, 
Um, there's a lot of stuff that can be tracked and going back through your Google settings, viewing your privacy settings, seeing what options that you've got selected there is always a good idea to kind of go and dig into those things. Even with the phone turned off, there's tracking that has gone up to that point to even lead you to where you could be up to that point because you're always connecting with some other type of application and those applications can have data that's tracking you. There's always triangulation where they can just triangulate your location between three cell tower points and find where you're located. All right, so that's it. I've spoken with developers who are trying to, or actually already have, created privacy boxes of some sort. But for the most part, sorry folks, no privacy. That's just the way it is nowadays. You know, it's kind of a catch-22 Big Brother situation. You know, it's like we've got these things that are so great in our lives and they do so much for us. But Google, apparently, from when they very first started their company back to the initiation of their first servers, every single search performed by every single person ever has been recorded and they're backed up in their databases. And that information can be gone back through and found. Every single search by every single person is stored. It kind of makes you wonder if this isn't why we don't have more terrorist attacks in this country. Because maybe, just maybe, the FBI is truly monitoring all this stuff. That's definitely something I want to cover in a future podcast. So, Richard, I happen to know that you're someone who totally values your privacy. And that's okay. You keep a really low profile on the web. But you have kudos from clients like DTPM, Drug Testing Management, and Procter & Gamble. So if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do it? Best way is through upwork.com where my freelance account is located and you can simply find me by searching through freelancers for Richard E. Hey, thanks, Richard. It was so great to have you on this podcast and I appreciate your time. Well, thank you so much. It was great being here. I appreciate the time, Tim. You have a great day. Stay right where you are. I'd like you to take a moment to recognize one of our partners who helped make this podcast possible. Shopify helps businesses break sales records over the holidays with the world's best converting checkout. Let's hear that one more time. The world's best converting checkout. Shopify's legendary checkout makes it easier for customers to shop on your website, across social media, and everywhere in between. Now that's music to your ears. Any way you spin it, you can be a smash hit with Shopify. Start your dollar a month trial today at shopify.com slash records. You know, hearing that music from Purple Planet, suddenly I'm in the mood for sushi. Now, isn't it really so bad when you're a sushi fan, you get targeted ads for sushi restaurants and takeout? Well, yes and no. All this information we've been talking about can be shared across other Apple devices connected to the same iCloud account because Google shares account information across multiple devices. Apple claims that it doesn't store this data for itself. It stays locked on your device rather than beam back to Apple. Supposedly, all Apple can see is anonymous data that has been grouped with data from other users. No names attached. But in the other end, the only way you can really escape being seen in one form or another is to shut off your phone, box it up, and bury it far away from signals or third-party software, especially open-source software. Outside of that, everything you do with your device is being monitored, tracked, and reported. And what's in store for the future of location technology? Eh, You probably already know. It's machine learning, according to Greg Sterling. He is the vice president of strategy and insights at the Local Search Association. AI, or artificial intelligence, along with 5G technology, and its many, many antennas will find you one way or another. But you know, I'm on this like white on rice. If there's a way to protect yourself from privacy invasion, don't sweat it. I'm going to do the research, and I'm going to let you know all about it. And that's why it's a good idea to subscribe to all of our podcasts so you don't miss a beat. Head over to iTunes, Google Play, hit the big old subscribe button, so then you get our podcast delivered to you automatically even when you're sleeping. And while you're there, you know the drill. Give me a great five-star rating. Yes, love that. Thank you so much. I'm Kim Commando, and don't forget, you can always find me 24-7 at our website. That's Commando, of course. K-O-M-A-N-D-O dot com.